In this video, you're about to meet Matt, one of our guys who spent nine years as a service engineer for Hydroclear, a water filtration company. And despite holding an HNC in electrical engineering, Matt felt a massive gap in his practical, real-world electrical experience. And he was also starting to get a little bit bored of the mundane service work that he was doing day to day and wanted to start working on projects focusing more on the controls and instrumentation, specifically designing, building and programming control systems. Now previously, Hydroclear had to outsource all of their control panel work to expensive third-party contractors, but through deliberately learning the full skill set of a controls engineer, Matt ingeniously not only transformed his own career, moving away from service work into becoming a full-time controls engineer, but also was able to save the company, Hydroclear, thousands every month, allowing them to bring everything in-house. So let's dive into the full conversation where you'll see how Matt's career will now never be the same. And if you ever want to reach out to Matt, you can find his LinkedIn profile in the description. Um, well, firstly, mate, thank you for just carving out this this time just to jump on this call. It's really appreciated, bud. I just want to sort of... Um, to ask you just yeah just really sort of like some some questions about you know where you were before before you sort of found the automation like the program and then sort of yeah, yeah just yeah. just that kind of thing uh i started off as a service engineer for a water filtration company oh uh, yeah, yeah yeah so um i did my apprenticeship with them about what nine years ago um so then uh started off servicing ro basic ro plants water softeners things like that. Uh, whilst I was with them, I did a HMC um, in electrical engineering, but there was a massive gap then because I was dead interested in the electrical side, but I went, because I went down the academic route straight into a HMC, I realized that you don't actually learn that much practical, real world electrical stuff. It's all like you do projects. Some of the modules we did was the same as the mechanical lads and, and girls on the course. So um, yeah, I just found that I was like desperate to find something in controls and automation because that was something I was interested in. I was looking online. I found like a city and guilds course, which then just disappeared. And then that's when I stumbled across your, your Instagram page. Um, and I think this was before you set up, you'd set up the, uh, you set up the, the academy. And I think I messaged you actually about, do you do any like face-to-face -face training, whether you could do like a course, if I, maybe I could come down to your way and maybe learn that yeah. way. And then out of nowhere, you set up the academy. <laughs> almost like it was meant to be yeah so that was like 18 months two years ago and yeah. you were you were really just trying to get some hands-on practical understanding yeah. of of controls and yeah. automation yeah i had, I also I already had like a decent sound knowledge of reading electrical drawings um fault finding in panels uh and stuff like that but i wanted to go down the route of like designing panels building panels um because it's, it's something that i'm just generally i was generally interested in but obviously it's a big step, isn't it? Like fault finding a panel to then sitting down, design a panel and having confidence to like, to, to, to do it basically. Um, and that's when obviously I joined the Academy. Um, so I joined, I'd say it like, um, obviously, obviously you can understand electrical drawings and things, but more the practical skills and other bits that come with it. That was what I was looking for. Yeah. So did you have, somewhere in mind that you were trying to get to in terms of like a, a physician or somewhere in your career or business? Uh, like I could want to specialize as a controls and instrumentation engineer really and then go from there uh, which I feel like I'm, I'm pretty much doing now since I've been since I started the academy I've probably done about 10 panels. Have you? I've done like yeah I've done about 10 panels. Oh no it's just a company that I work for now and uh, yeah some of them effort systems, RO, industrial RO systems, um yeah, I've done a little bit of PLC program only on Siemens logo, so it's a bit like a, yeah. a touch into the PLC program inside. But like I say, I don't want to get too ahead of myself. You know what I mean, you've got a long career ahead, so I just want to get a sound knowledge and then and then go from yeah. there. Oh, mate, that's because I, I we haven't really touched base much, yeah. have we? Yeah. So yeah. so this is like catching up. Like yeah, yeah. I think we touched base maybe a year ago, but oh, that's really that's really good to know. So yeah. So yeah, so so you found found the the um the program, you you joined that, and so in, in have you have you stayed within the same 
um, company or business? Yes, yes, yes. So I've stayed within them. I've just kind of... So the company I was working for used to outsource a lot of their control panels to another company, you see. Right. So I'm trying to bridge that gap. Don't get me wrong, there's obviously quite a big company, so there's still so much to do outsource, which is yeah. it's completely fine. But I've now filled in that void, you see. Uh, oh, brilliant. But a lot of things in house, so then that's kind yeah. of like upskilling my, upselling myself and obviously reducing their costs because now they've got an in-house controls design engineer. And yeah. They're, they're, they're over the moon, as you see, so. Um, that's really good. That's mate. I'm. I lo- That's that's. Obviously, I wasn't expecting you to say say that. So that's really, really. I'm really pleased to hear that. What? So, what? Tell tell me what you're actually doing, like for this for this business. What are you uh, are you offering them with your skill set now? So basically, all these, all so all the new plant that they produce now. Um, I'll do all the electrical drawings. Um, I'll do all uh, the specifications for it, and then I'll you're do them as well. Yeah, yeah, and then I'll build the panels commission them and then some of the smaller stuff for William Siemens logo I've done all the programming so pretty much a one stop shop at the minute um, yeah. for them so it's uh, it's good it's busy it will, it's good well mate it, this is this is it like you will never not be busy when you can yeah. do all of those things this is yeah. this is the beauty of it um it was that in the water industry or you said you yeah. were in- yeah no I'm still in the water yeah so I I I stuck to like oh sorry I was getting an email there um yeah, I've stuck in the water filtration industry. So a lot of them are RO plants, uh, effluent systems, wastewater tr- systems like that, you see. So I've kind of stuck in that remit because I've, I've obviously got nine to 10 years, well, come on to 10 years in the industry now. So it's just been um, nice and nice and easy, really, because I've got a lot of experience in there, you see. So, and I haven't yeah. had to branch out into other sectors yet, really, because the demand and the work is, yeah. is, uh, is quite high in the water treatment industry. So you were doing a lot of site work, like service maintenance work, were you before? Yeah. So I was a, a service engineer and I was getting a little bit bored of the mundane. I like learning something new all the time. Um, I was getting a little bit bored of the mundane service work. Do you know what I mean, you go into the same customers, you, you, you identify the same faults, they don't spend any money on the kit. <laughs> and then, do you know what I mean? And you just get in that cycle of, you go into customers that, that don't want to look after the equipment, then you're going to the same faults and then you just kind of get a bit um, a bit bored really and a bit stagnant. And then obviously I had a decent understanding of electrical control systems. And then obviously when I joined the course, I've gone to like a really sound understanding now. So I feel like my co- it's more, it's the confidence it's given me really more so than, than anything else because some things you go, oh yeah, I, I already knew that. Or, and then you see like, and you, then you go, right, okay, now you look at control systems in a completely different way. Um, always opening panels, taking photos. That's another note that I got off you. When you say yeah. in your early career, you'd take photos, wouldn't you? In any panel, open it, take a photo. So I do now, take a photo. Oh yeah, how have they done that? How have they wired that? Look at drawings. All right, why have they done that? Um, and then once I started getting that the bug in the control side, I, I just couldn't face doing any service work anymore. <laughs> Which sometimes I do have to because I work for a company and obviously it's a smaller company. I'll always help out and still do bits and bobs where I can. Um, but I'm trying to make myself purely uh, controls and automation now, which fingers crossed. So you're like over the space of say a month, what does your on average, your average day or week look like? What are you, what sort of things are you actually doing for this business? This last month. So we've had two, two, um, two new plants that have just finished. So I've been part of a, a, a validation process for a pharmaceutical We've just put a new RO system in for a pharmaceutical company, so I've been involved in the in the uh, the fat test for that. And and part of the fat test is they scrutinise the, the electrical drawings, so they factory have a, acceptance test. Yeah, yeah, and because it's for because it's for the pharmaceutical industry, it's got to go through a process called validation. So what they say is everything that you've said is everything you've you've every component you've spec'd is there and it's wired correctly. So I've had someone over my shoulder going through every single um, component in the panel checking that that wire goes to where it should do, checking that it's labelled correctly, which is a new thing for me. Um, so obviously, if you used to say to me 18 months ago, you are going to have someone over your shoulder, inspected every cable you've put in a panel, I'd yeah. kind of uh, freaked out a bit. But now, when you've got the confidence, um, yeah, it was great. And uh, so, yeah, that's been pretty much this month. I've been away uh, quite twice this month, so that's probably slowed down work this month. But yeah, so I've spent most of my time uh, in the main office either that's doing electrical designs um pricing up for new for new work or um continuing with programming or 
or some panel builds, whichever. So yeah. it's really. Yeah. So do you, do you feel like you've, you've got the confidence capability to deliver full projects end to end from like spec design, documentation, panel building, testing, programming, then like, you know, potential install and then commissioning on site? Yeah, I'd say so. Um, I wouldn't, depending on how big the system is, I think it's more confidence for that. I wouldn't want to say I'd do like a, um, like a false design without any help. Um, but in terms of specking from the getting what the customer, customer requirements are to designing the panel, to building the panel, to then commissioning the panel, um, then yeah, hundred percent, definitely can't yeah. doing that. I just haven't had any experience of, of the initial phases of, uh, pricing it up other than that right. with whole job, for example, because we're not just plat- for, like, and you're, you're just providing a panel for someone, aren't you? Whereas we're providing, the, all the equipment and the panel that goes with that equipment. Shield stuff as yeah, well. Yeah, shield stuff yeah. as well, yeah. Yeah, okay. That's, yeah, that, that makes sense, mate. What, yeah. do, have you, um, have you, has your um, salary improved with taking on more of this responsibility? Like, you don't have to do me numbers if you don't want, mate, but. Yeah, but I think I've got uh, a bit of an agreement whereby to try and, to try and make it work for both parties and trying to get them to further fund further development opportunities, whether that be providing like, Siemens like PLC software, which is expensive, any, yeah. any equipment that I need. So then it's kind of like I'm trying to keep keep the relationship in that respect that yeah. they'll fuck. And then I get to myself to a point whereby I can go right, okay. Over the last two three years, this is what I've done. Now it's time that you want you want rewarded for that. Don't you? So yeah, yeah. So um, you're, you're building it up so yeah, you can leverage yeah. it down the line. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's what I do, man. Yeah, and I also I do, I do get a pretty decent salary anyway. So, um, yeah, so I, I'd yeah. rather invest in myself and then like short term paying for long term gain. I'd say. Yeah, 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 that's it, mate. Yeah, yeah. When the program sort of became available, and you, you we, we talked about coming on board. Like, did you have any initial concerns? Like, completely honestly, mate. Like, any hesitations, concerns? You know, before jumping on board. No, not at all. I, I, obviously, I, I feel like the free content you put out on Instagram is almost worth paying for. So because I'd seen what you'd done, like your little video snippets, even things like marking the isolator panel, remember that one you put on like two years ago? That's like a that's something I hate doing. Even to this day, you're still always yeah. nervous doing it, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. But, and I was like, and then your free content you put out, little snippets, you think, oh, yeah, that's a bit. Then as soon as I seen that, I was like, I remember it was a bit of a delay between the initial when we spoke and we did like, the the, uh, the group of us that obviously might have give you some info to help you to design yeah. the program. There's like a bit of a lag, wasn't there? And I was like chomping at the bit. When's it going to start? When's it going to start? But because I'd seen your Instagram page, your YouTube page, there's no hesitations whatsoever. Um, and that's what I'd say to anyone. Look how good the free content is that you put out. Imagine what you can get as a subscribed member. That's what I'd definitely say to anyone who's looking at it. And obviously, because I come with a bit of experience and a bit of knowledge, the way that the program's laid out, I generally think someone without any knowledge has the potential to get to a competent controls engineer in 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 no time really, as long as they're willing to put the time and effort in. It's yeah, not like a, it. it's not it's not like a guaranteed. Oh, you sign this course and then that's it. You don't know you sign this course and you still got to go and put the hours and the time in to do it yourself, haven't you? Uh, yeah, so that's something I'd say to people. But mate, that was just bang on there. I say to people all the time, like. It's like a gym membership. You're not yeah. going to get that body or lose that weight if you're not going to put in the time. Like you can invest financially. That's that's easy. That's just clicking a button. But like the actual hard work is actually putting in the time and actively learning, like you just mentioned. Yeah. Like that's that's really what's going to build this skill set. Yeah. So yeah, it's key. Like how how does it feel now? You've got that sort of level of confidence in being able to deliver that that amount of the project like you mentioned yeah it's good it's like um yeah it's just like the confidence it gives you so now i'm doing work that obviously you're really interested in and that's a massive thing so when obviously you got a bit bored of like servicing like uh, ro plants and deem implants and softeners and you're now learning something new it's like the there's no monday morning feeling anymore um like i'll find myself at home I'll be on the internet, re- like reading manuals, doing things just all the time. Anytime you've got any free time, nine o'clock at night, you'll be like looking at a manual for a new drive you're putting in them tomorrow or you're commissioning or something like that. So yeah, it's just like, there's no Monday morning feelings. 
anymore. I wouldn't say there won't be ever, but at the minute, it seems to be like, uh, and like every day is a school day is another thing. So you, because we're work, working on different equipment, different manufacturers, you, you're constantly learning all the time. It's like a, uh, yeah, constantly learning cycle. Yeah, mate, that's that. I, I can relate to that because um, I I used to be a service engineer like, for years yeah. and years, and I'd like so, some some roles were all right, and there'd be enough there to sort of learn and keep you going for like several years, but then you change roles and like you're there six months and you've learned everything yeah. and like you're bored. And then like a year later you, you change and it's the same thing. S- six months you've learned everything. But this, I felt exactly the same with this industry. There's just so much to it and you can go deep into so many different areas and just, yeah. you cannot learn it all. And that's yeah. like you say, every day is a, every day is a school day. Um, Yeah. And you just become interested. Like yeah. once you build up a certain level of understanding, like reading a new tech manual isn't overwhelming. No. It's and you know what you're looking for, and it's like yeah. oh, that's how that works. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, so it's I can relate, mate, totally. Yeah. Yeah. If if you had to pick like one thing out of the program, yeah, that that helped you the most, what would you say that was? I would say it's the. Uh like the templates, the parts list. So, cause I'd obviously have a little bit of knowledge. It was like, obviously the parts and hardware list, everything's listed. It's like the time you save with things like that straight away, the practical videos of like marking out the panel, how you did it. It's just things that if you haven't been shown before, like the amount of time you can save and it's just like you fast track your knowledge. Do you know what I mean? That's what I'd say. That's the best thing I think I've got the course. Like um, the parts and hardware lists, definitely saved me so much time because there's certain like certain components like you might use and i go and you type them into google and you can't necessarily find them because you don't because they might be like like double layer terminals some people call them multi-layer some people call them two layer different manufacturers say they're different things were is in the in the um academy in the vault you've got all sorts of like itemized lists of different components different templates you can use different calculators for cable calcs you know power fat all that sort of stuff um where you'd spend hours and hours and hours, wouldn't you? Find it yeah. back yourself. And it's all in one place. You just yeah. click on the app. There you go. And everything there, it's all in one place. Yeah. Well, that's, that's like six six years of resources that I've been using, collecting, sort of, yeah, just all in, in one place. Um, thanks for sharing that, mate. So would what what is your role now, would you say, officially? Um, I'd say I'm the uh, electrical controls engineer for the company I work for. Um yeah, I'm still multi-skilled, so obviously, like I said before, I still have to dip into other elements, which I don't mind because, like I say, it's a small company. I've worked there for quite a while now, so I'm always happy to help out. But, um, yeah, I've definitely created my own role there because it wasn't an electrical controls engineer in the company before. They were, like, using contractors uh, for that sort of thing now, so we're bringing more of that in-house. Yeah. So hopefully, within the next two to three years, I can grow that side of the business. And then who knows, maybe I, I could go hopefully they're not watching the bosses but i could potentially uh go on my own and, and subcontract myself that i think that is the ultimate goal to be a specialist in controls myself rather than working for um, another company now if you're an engineer who wants to become a controls engineer just like what matt has done or perhaps you're a business owner with a team of engineers that you want to upskill you can find a link in the description of how we might be able to help you do this and what you've just watched is a shorter edited version of the full conversation i had with matt and if you want to listen to the full unedited chat you can find that on our other channel, Control System Specialist, which is linked in the description. And finally, just a reminder, if you do want to reach out to Matt and connect with him, you can find his LinkedIn profile also in the description.